Brad has set a single planet spawn for this one. The metal planet has a fair bit of metal on it. The lava planet, um, both lava planets are similar amounts. They're both in the game. Where they are. They're spawning quite close to each other, actually. The Bombot strap might work in this one if he gets some AA with it. <laughs> and maybe some radar coverage, some scouting, so he actually knows which direction to send the things in, perhaps. Oh, definitely, yes. GLHF is called from Matisse PL, who's in pink towards the southwest of Brad. Who's in around the equator of this metal planet in the white color? Going up a typical early build strat as well. Vehicles first. He's changed. He's learning. He's. Oh, he's... read the chat. Uh, the problem with Brad is already voided that metal extractor, which is put so close to that, the vehicle factory, so close to that metal extractor. He won't be able to build on that. So without expansions, he's going to be even more hampered for metal this time round. Brad doesn't need metal. Brad does what he wants. <clears throat> I'm here to kick ass and chuck planets, and I'm all out of ass. That, um, that, can we not, uh, I feel uncomfortable now. <laughs> I'm My scared. Apologies. Hold me. There will be no holding, Ron Cat. Be a man. <laughs> right, Matiz has gone air first again. We have a Indeed. scout out, a skitter from Brad. He's learned at least that. If you're gonna it's going the other way! Oh! <laughs> I reckon Brad has put on a planet wide patrol rather than actually learning to individually control these units, hence why the skitter is coming back to his base at this point. <laughs> oh no. Brad is more than prepared, he's on anti air first. There we and go. Another vehicle, Faber. Oh, Brad first blood? Ooh, it's gonna oh. be close, not quite. Not quite. Matisse Brad, has Brad seen it though. Mistake instantly going to uh, grab some more metal with those fabricators, and he said, "Ah, he's learning fast. Will he learn in time to?" That bumblebee's gonna to... get a kill. Oh! oh! Single bomb Orbital. dropped. Orbital. Orbital launcher joking. first from Brad. Oh dear! Here, Here we, we go. go. Okay. <laughs> this is why, ladies and gentlemen, he has gone for this same setup where a single Halley is required for each of these planets to be launched. His, I'm sure, end game plan here is for Matisse to be so distracted trying to ruffle stomp him by traditional means that he can just drop a planet on his head and be satisfied with the result. Problem. But will Matisse allow him off, off the planet? Problem with traditional ruffle stomping, it tends to be slightly more effective than trying to rush orbital. <laughs> Uh, that's just my that's just my synopsis, but uh, there's I'm, a skitter still wandering around his base. Like, yep, yep, this looks fine to me. This is a base. <laughs> uh, I think he may have accidentally not done global patrol on that, and perhaps stopped short, so it's just patrolling the very small area around his base. Or maybe it's not. Whoa. Maybe it's not accidental. Have a look at that. Matisse turret creeping with AA, moving his commander in now as a result of seeing this. Brad is not happy about that. And Matisse is going, <laughs> that didn't work, and running away. Faber getting killed as well by a bumblebee just off to the other side of that little uh, little ditch there. But uh, Proxy That's Base queued up already. Play here Indeed. He's queued up a uh, Proxy Base with it, while the rest of his bases continue to expand and uh, with more P-Gens. He's on his second vehicle factory now, producing Infernos. And uh, Brad's progress on his orbital factory has just been stalled, and Bumblebee just came through and destroyed the fabricators that were building it. He knows what he's up to, and he's doing everything he can to stop it. And that commander is going to build that orbital launcher so much quicker than those fabbers now. Look at that orbital launcher go. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded too cheesy. I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> <clears throat> But yes, I suspect probably an Astraeus out first. I don't think he'll risk the time on the orbital fabricator. Or at least that's what I wouldn't do. If I were Brad, I would want to be off of this planet that's got Matisse on it as soon as possible. Because Matisse <laughs> is not a pleasant um, planet fellow. Indeed, this planet ain't big enough for the two of them. And now, Marshall, we had that yesterday. We had yeah. more than our fair share of that yesterday. Well, you got it again today. Anyway, Astraeus coming out for Brad. I wonder whether that's going to take the Fabricator or the Commander. Probably the Commander. Indeed Commander's it is. Off. Commander is going. To which planet? Now I'm going to start setting up my camera anchors here. 
I'm just watching Matisse's base. I expect that he knows that this orbital launcher is being worked on. He will probably want to get an orbital radar up to try and figure out where Brand is sending that commander. There he goes. He's off to the Utan. outer lava planet. Utan indeed. Can we find the movement queue? I don't think it's easy to spot. Ah, we've got actually now we have an orbital radar up here from Brad, which if the UI will let me select his point of view, gives him a very, very wide field of view around this planet. He's got a good idea of what Matisse is up to now at all times. He's sending out the sun to sit over his base. It's not quite the advanced orbital radar though, however. So no, he can see that proxy base now. and the commander. So perhaps building an anchor with these uh, with these orbital fabbers over that proxy base and over his own. But what He's he really needs to do is camp Matisse's base to make sure he does not get into orbital. I think that's one of Brad's uh, major initiatives at this point in time. I'm using the picture in picture now to keep track of what's going on. Brad has arrived at the lava planet and I believe is about to set his commander down. It is on foot. And a teleporter going up as well, so he's obviously thinking of transferring his units across. Oh damn, I have some um, rather schizophrenic uh, icon bugs going on here. I've got some very strongly flickering icons. Oh wow, that is... Can you stop that in this game? Oh god. Matisse's commander has taken a little bit of damage from these uh, PD that are in Brad's base. As a sort of, you know what, you tried to kill my comm, so I will just chip your paintwork. However, Matisse is now going to see that orbital launcher building stuff and is going to want to answer that with, excuse me, with his own, which has already begun and is about a sixth of the way through. So I'm actually uh, unable to use picture in picture because it causes some peculiar icon flickering, so I apologise for that. You're going to have to keep me posted on what's going on on Newtown because if I have it enabled, then I'm going to give myself an epileptic fit. Well, basically, Brad has put up a teleporter there and has left with his commander, which isn't the brightest of moves because he hasn't put up a factory there first. Instead, he's moving his commander back to the other lava planet now, to Turgrimoth. <laughs> interesting, uh, interesting choice of names here. However, there is an anchor over Matisse's proxy base, firing down at the uh, vehicle factory. It's whittling it down slowly because, of course, the factories have had a massive health buff to the point that T2 vehicle, fa well, T2 factories, full stop, survive planet smashing. <laughs> And Matisse now has his own orbital here to follow up. Yep. It's so we're going finished to now yet, see. However. Matisse, the, Matisse is in the chat. WTF is happening. I'm still surprised, I'm surprised Brad still has positive energy. Well, he's not building anything. He's only got his commander wandering around space. Uh, Matisse is now also putting up a deep space um, orbital and deep space radar in his base. So he's going to be able to keep track of Brad's movements throughout this solar system. I'm going to put up my third camera anchor on uh, on Tigramoth as Brad arrives. Again in picture in picture for my viewers. <coughs> I don't think Matisse is aware of what anchor they're currently <coughs> capable of. He's just said in the chat there. Um, Stuff is shooting me from space. I'm like, very upset about it. His commander's taking damage from that anchor. I don't know why he's. The umbrella goes up super slowly as well, especially when not built by the commander. So if that anchor is actually keeping a tab of what's going on, unfortunately it doesn't have vision range of the ground, and Brad needs power in order for that uh, radar to actually be working. Hence why the anchor's not really doing all that much. Brad desperately needs to get up power. He's now arrived on Tigramoth as well. So again, another another camera anchor required. Getting up PGENs as well there, so he knows the, about his priorities, which is well for certain efficiency. Sign. I'd say that is a priority. Indeed, he mm -hmm. do. I think the problem is he's just trying to build out that orbital factory over the other side. If he held off on that, he could do a lot of damage to this commander with this anchor. A lot of damage. Well, at the moment, both players absolutely <clears throat> struggling for energy here. Matisse is starting to creep his way back up. He knows there's a problem. He's building more power gens. He's got two teams of fabricators working on power gens. Once his radar is online, his orbital radar, and everything comes online, he will know what he's doing a lot better than he currently does. Brad's little base on Yutan has not done anything, because, of course, there's no factory there. There's only a teleporter and a single mech, so that is relatively irrelevant right now. Brad also getting up PGENs on his other system, and he's now actually up into uh, the green again, 
Unfortunately, the anchor is up as not the anchor, sorry, the umbrella. So uh, not uh, particularly well targeted there with that anchor. <coughs> Extra damage done to the commander is not going to happen this day. <coughs> this does have his own Astraeus now. It just picked up something, uh, a fabricator. Yep, just a single vehicle fabra and uh, an not anchors, sorry, Avengers coming out from the orbital fa launcher at this point as well. And that Astraeus is going to go to Tigramoth where Brad's unsuspecting commander is waiting. Could a base without a commander kill a base with a commander? That's the next question. And the answer is yes. Does Brad have a base? He has a bot factory. Not yet completed. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's technically a, a base. There we go. Right. It is now complete. Not building anything as of yet. He's getting up more pgens, however, which is uh, a good sign. So now we're just playing a game of cat and mouse at this point. Yes, indeed. However, Matisse is getting out a lot of Avengers, so I suspect he's going to try and get Brad's orbital sniping going on, and as long as he takes out these uh, orbital fabbers that are still sort of wandering around uh, the metal planet, <clears throat> Brad's massive investment earlier will be completely uh, crippled, leaving him with a base somewhere on a planet somewhere else. If you see, uh, Matisse's is Astraeus has arrived on Tigramoth. He's not landed it yet. He's obviously his attention is focused elsewhere. Brad is focusing on re-establishing himself here. Um, some metal extractors probably would not go amiss at this point. He's building some fabricators trying to get himself re-established here. Looking at the economy tab, you can see Matisse, by virtue of the fact that he has actually been able to steadily take over control of this metal planet, has a huge economy advantage at this point. Brad is going to have to pull off some incredible stunts to actually win this one. Uh, you never know, because the thing with these orbital games is if you own a planet, there is a strong tendency to just focus on fortifying it. And I think, you know, especially... I don't know how Matisse is versed with uh, orbital games, but at the moment it certainly seems as though most of his control is still on his main base, queuing up even more PGENs. He's only just sorting out a teleporter on uh, Tigramoth, as is Brad. So Brad will have a teleporter network to the other lava planet, which he has actually uh, activated. Has he actually utilised it? That's the next question. The answer is no, nothing has been sent through as of yet. The last is about to go through. I I'm wondering, does Matiz know that <coughs> each of these planets will need one Haley to fire? <laughs> I'm sure Matiz will know that. He'll be quite acutely aware, I'd imagine. Yeah, when he gets fact, thrown in his face. I'm surprised, actually, that Matisse, if say, all he needs to do is drop down this list here at the top right and he'll see exactly what's going on. He's going yeah. T2 now. I have a feeling he may be trying to rush a Haley on Ardanian. I don't think there's much point in rushing it on Ardanian because look at the planet sizes. I don't think that one has the ability to smash it into, in, into any of the other ones because it is bigger. Although that also, I think, depends on the mass ratings of the planets. I'm not entirely sure how it works, however. But I looking have... at the so looking at the build cues on Tigramoth, you can see the entire planet is coated in blueprints for metal extractors. I'm not quite sure who has those. I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that it's Brad has just done a planet-wide command on that, because he's expanding obviously on his trying to get his metal economy established here. Yep. Matisse, meanwhile, has got his little base set up here. A couple of factories planned. Teleporter sat idle currently, but could. Burst into Brad rushing time T2 bots on Tigramoth. <clears throat> well, I say rushing, I mean building with one fabricator. That's not exactly rushing. I think he's just added a second fab fabricator onto that. Uh, so that might be his Haley strat there. Both players, both players at this point, I think, are <coughs> going for Haley's. Oh, definitely. However, Matisse's commander still idle on, uh, on Ardanian at this point, and Brad's base on the uh, on uh, Utan beginning to take hold however Matisse also has a fabricator there just to the south of it actually well I say the south actually I keep forgetting I haven't put Pollock on so it's just to it's the west. west indeed and uh, I should hope that Brad starts to get up some factories there because he cannot continue under the assumption that Matisse is not in orbital he just cannot afford to do so up goes a teleporter on Utan from Matisse Matisse is currently struggling for energy. He's got his teleporter <coughs> up ready to go, but he can't actually send anything through because he is still really, really struggling for energy. He's got yeah. his T2 factory up and running. He's building some T2 fabricators. He's currently sat idle. 
Brad's T2 box is almost halfway, actually, compared to Matisse's vehicle factory, which is now complete. There is a T2 vehicle fabric out of the uh, production line. It hasn't been queued up to do anything as of yet. However, Brad's box factory is going to be qui pretty quickly behind. Matisse now building an SXX or a Sizzix from his orbital factory. So these things can uh, kill a commander in about five to seven hits. Plus, they get a free hit off if they uh, enter the orbital space directly in range of the commander and already have an attack queued up. That'll, that'll be what has been draining uh, Matisse's energy economy so far this game, because you can see that that orbital factory is 2,700 energy per second. Yeah, however, he is getting up T2 power and is actually sort of fl flittering between blue and green. He's got a lot of fabricators there building power. He's really looking to bump that up. Let's see how Brad's getting on over here. He's almost completed his tier 2. However, there's factory. an army of infernos just on the other side of the horizon. Brad's going to need some units over there to defend. Otherwise, he's going to find himself in a pretty tricky situation if he's trying to rush Haley's on this planet. Matisse currently has no info on this planet. However, he's just had his Avengers spot Brad's Astraeus and shoot it down. He's got no intel here, he doesn't know where Brad is, if Brad is indeed here, he's just sending those on a random path, which unfortunately looks like it's about to take them straight through the middle of Brad's base. That is a really significant force in Inferno, so that could have a really nasty potential for Brad's base. Instantly Brad takes his commander through the teleporter. He's not waiting around. Does Brad actually know about that threat on the on that planet the nope. answer is no so <laughs> as if by magic yeah either that or he's stream sniping because that's the sort of thing brad would do that is technically Ooh. breaching the rules allegations sir not <laughs> 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 not safe for work right so brad is on the other planet with a force of many well <laughs> Eight bot fabbers and the T2 bot fabber as well, so he's obviously legging it away, trying to save his skin. Where uh, sort of coaching Matisse around, sort of playing a bit of, you know, I have a base here, uh -oh. you can deal with it. There's a, there's getting a off. Halley going up from Brad here. Brad is completely unaware that just a few meters even out of his vision radius, there is a small base here from Matisse right next to his Haley, with the teleporter now active on Utan, where Brad is building his first Haley. The teleporter is connected back to the main planet. Let's see what's queued up to leg it through. A whole new force of Infernos is about to run through there. A small force, nonetheless, but still a force. The commander could finish them off. Ah, oh, heck up the Infernos. Uh, this, for this, boys and girls, is a lesson in why intel is so crucially important to your game. These two here are completely unaware of each other's existence. <laughs> It's almost as though Matisse is trying to find uh, Brad, sort of on an Easter egg hunt, if you will, while Brad is saying, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery with the Easter eggs and keep changing their hiding locations to where you've already looked, sort of thing. That's what I do on Easter egg hunts. <laughs> okay, the, the, bison ty the bison tiger moth has now been completely scouted and is completely under siege. Well, uh, a, a siege is a strong yeah. word. <laughs> Lots is... of defensive turrets there. Yeah, those those infernos are going to have a little bit of trouble, although they will get to there to do some damage, I suspect. Will they kill them all off? The answer is likely to be no. Um, but they just about do a damage. There we go, starting to, but uh, losing all their forces nonetheless. They do not know whether the commander is there or not, although I think with the fireflies, Matisse probably has a fairly good idea that the commander is not. Looking back over uh, to Matisse's base on Tigramov, however... He's got a T2 Faber there getting up some T2 metal. So Brad has fled another planet, leaving its control to Matisse, it seems. Which so we're stuck now here wise. on this absolutely absurd situation here on Utan, where the two players are both desperately trying to get things up and running and just completely unaware that they are building right next to each other, just Ooh. out of line of sight. That Haley is now about a third of the way complete. All it's going to take is for Brad to get that up secretly and for Matisse's commander to sit there blissfully unaware on the main uh -oh. planet. And he hasn't That's moved. Vanguard. Wait, That's what? two vanguards. Uh-oh. Indeed they are. Now they actually uh -oh. have had a change. They have got an uber cannon now uh -oh. as a weapon because I quote Meta when I asked him why that was a change. He said, because it's awesome. <laughs> 
That's as good a reason as any. Indeed. This is absolutely ridiculous, this situation we've got here. All it takes is for any one of these players just to accidentally walk in the wrong direction or to put up a radar or anything like that, and then this is just going to explode, the situation here. <laughs> yeah, there are two vanguards here, a single vanguard, a single commander. There are two vanguards, a fleet of infernos, and a commander sat right there. Right, so Brad has his power back in the green while focusing down on this Haley. It's going up really quite quickly now by the look of it. Uh, so that's only going to take maybe about two to three more minutes to complete, relative. However, oh, all it's going to oh. take are for those vanguards to move. <laughs> Every time anything moves vaguely in that direction, I just gasp. Here oh, they come! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> and guess where the movement it command is? It's oh, in the oh, wrong it, direction! It, it. There it, it goes! It. The commander needs to get off there and or finish that Haley. I think okay. he should probably just go, you know, YOLO BOLO. There goes. I'm going to build go. a Haley. Yellow wipe is commencing. About half of the way complete now. Brad is panicking. He's seen those vanguards. He knows what's he, coming. He needs to get up Matisse, some time. <laughs> Matisse hasn't noticed. Matisse has not noticed. There's some more vanguards coming to the teleport. There's a this fleet of vanguards on this planet. This is so tense. Oh, wow. That's a stampede, Brad, not a fleet. Brad, Brad. God, Brad, I'm really losing for Brad here. I want to see a planet smash. Looking at Brad's Matisse base on... He's, no, his units are turning now. They've noticed. They're moving oh back God, towards the Haley. I think this is going to be a lost cause for Brad. Brad's going to need to get his commander off. He's going to YOLO in with his commander. He doesn't want to do that. He's going to see the vanguards and he's going to go, Oops, not my kind of battle, this one. No, 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 Brad. No. What are you doing? No! What are you doing, me both of these players are now going to see this game in the post game review <laughs> and they're going to see just how close they were building these two bases to each other oh let's bring brad right in. let's We've let's bring brad in let's bring him in bring him up mr brad, muscles snake. <laughs> <laughs> i almost had it i feel like i almost had it if uh if i hadn't tanked my economy earlier i feel like that would have been done it was so close it was it really was i was i was like I didn't lose like literally everything on the middle metal planet. I feel like I could have actually pulled that off, and it would have been funny. I think because you fortified your base on Tigramoth, you could have pr pr bleh, probably could have legged it back there and built the Haley over there once you saw the vanguards coming. Because you had so many T three uh, T three defenses over there now. I you know I I honestly don't know what vanguards can cut through and how easily. Like I'm not that, that's why I kind of made the decision there. Uh, a commander in three hits is a certainty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just re oh, that. I don't know, did you, in the post-game review, Brad, did you see just how close you and Matisse are building your two bases to one another? No, I had no, I, I had no vision either, which was another issue, I feel like, in that game. You and Matisse, <laughs> were, for about ten minutes, we were sat there watching your two bases just merrily chugging along <laughs> next to each other. You were both blissfully unaware of each other's existence. <laughs> That's awesome. On the metal planet, or on uh, what no, this is on Utah, on... where you're building your yeah. alien, and those vanguards were sitting just out of your vision radius. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Yeah. No, I saw the vanguards passing by, like not noticing. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> eventually, he's gonna see that. He's probably gonna turn around. This is probably the part where I die. It was unfortunate. That, uh, that planet smash, that would have been fantastic. If you'd managed to find the planet that his commander was on, of course. Yeah, I was, I was going to go ahead and guess the metal planet and see what happened. It would have been, yeah, good, he would have been a very good guess. Mat Matisse hadn't moved his commander for pretty much the majority of the game after he shot down your anchor, so it was still sat next to that umbrella. That makes sense. I get, I get the sense <laughs> that Matisse doesn't move around planets very much. It seemed like he was a little freaked out by the anchor, even. Yeah, he didn't, I don't think Matisse was quite familiar with the anchor. And on that, should we bring Matisse up here and get him to uh, give us his opinion on this? Hello, Matisse. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, so, buddy. Matisse, anchors, they are, they're different now. I, I have, wow, I was surprised that something is shooting from the sky to me, you know? I, I had no idea what's going on. Well, <laughs> I, I haven't played, you know, Orbital for like two months or something, and... And uh, it seems like Orbital is getting much better. I'm pretty excited because uh, like when when Orbital comes to play, uh, like seriously in competitive games and stuff, it will be so exciting and so awesome. What did you think of the Orbital play in that game? Well, 
yeah, you know, I, I I dominated the main planet, so I had much more income, and I could. I, it was just uh, from that, it was pretty much a, a one game, uh, unless I get surprised somehow. But uh, uh, <laughs> I did, but uh, I don't know if if he uh, if Brad uh, tried to snipe my commander with the anchor, that maybe could have worked. I, I'm not sure. But were you aware, Matisse, that on the far out planet Utan? Uh, Brad and you were both building bases directly next to one another the entire game. <laughs> neither of you had radar, and neither of you were scouting. You were just sat there building your two bases. You know, I was busy figuring out what to do and uh, how does Orbital work and stuff, so, you know, I, I didn't um, remember about uh, making radars and stuff. So that's, that's funny, yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. I don't scout. Like, that's just a general rule of mine. I don't build metal and I don't scout. Because I don't need those things. <laughs> well, honest, uh, honestly, I'm not, like, huge on scouting either. Uh, unless I have it, like, uh, in my build order or something. I, I usually get surprised too. So, uh, I guess we have something in common. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Alright. Hey, did so you know you stopped me from building a Haley? Did, did you see that? Hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, see, that's why I rushed my commander out there, because I feel like that was my game ender regardless, and if you're going to take that out, I would just go home and cry. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised how vanguards are shooting with uber cannons. I didn't know that. They are so good now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like three think... shots? What but what hell? we have here is two, pl two players who were both using and abusing game mechanics that neither of them were fully aware of, I think. <laughs> nice. that's, this is that's top level pro. play, gentlemen. Top level play. MLG leagues. This is... <laughs> Hells yeah. yeah. yeah it, one it more. Was, yeah, sure. It, it was still kind of hard to manage three planets at once, so maybe uh, I need to figure more it out. More planets, Brad! More planets! <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> you guys wouldn't let me make more planets because your rules. They were well, my they, rules, they, sir. They, they do say that rules are made to be broken, however, Quitch might get quite upset if you did. They're more like guidelines than actual what you, rules. What do you think we... Why don't we break some rules here, Matisse? You want to have an electrifying <laughs> third match? Hell yeah, I'm always up for breaking rules. Alright, I like I like the way you think. Alright, buddy, I'm gonna make a system. Five planets, no holds barred, cage match. Oh, snap. Oh, okay. okay.